All right, dudes. Been having some problems with the uh, encoding and all the mishmash, jizzy jazz of of computer stuff. I used to be really good at it. I'm not good at it anymore. So, uh, <laughs> in short, I'm just gonna record these videos to my my camera and upload them directly from my camera. Uh, I wanted to like edit them and put some music in, maybe do some transitions, you know, cut out the parts where I go have to go run and get some gear because I'm talking about it and I forgot to bring it into my room. But you're shit out of luck, so <laughs> you have fun watching it. Um, this one, this video is going to be all about shelter. And by the way, if you if you've like hung with me this far on these videos, uh, that means you probably really are interested in where this whole project's gonna go. And if you are, dude, if you see some gear that that you want me to talk more about, I will tell you everything. I love talking about my experiences with my gear. Love it. So if I hold something up and I'm like, yeah, I use this, but yeah, I'm not gonna use it anymore, dude. Hit me up. I think YouTube said I'm eligible for videos that are over 15 minutes, but frankly, uh, I've got so much to say that it's probably going to go over 15 minutes. I don't know how long it's going to be, so I don't know what I can upload. But I know I can at least do 15 minutes, so that's what I'm going to try and do. And, uh, yeah. So, shelter. What about shelter? Talking... How does shelter relate to the Yule system? I think, I like to think of shelter as a, uh, well, okay, God, where to begin? There's so much shit. You have to understand, I'm trying to, like, talk about more than a decade of experience in dealing with shelter and the outdoors in, like, 15 minutes, so, <clears throat> I guess, I guess I'll start where I originally started, where everyone starts. Uh, when I wanted shelter, in the old days, I got me a tent. Got me a nice Eureka tent. And tents are great and all, but I soon came to learn that they weren't versatile at all. And plus, this is like 8 pounds, and it's just, just shelter. It's not insulation. Um, so, God, I guess I can't really start there. All right. I mean, we'll put, put that aside for a second, but when I think about shelter, I'm thinking, all I'm thinking is how to maintain my, my metabolic rate. Your body is always in a constant state of homeostasis, and, and your shelter, uh, what keeps you alive, is that, that exothermic heat that your body is putting out. And what you want to do is trap that. So the, the essence of your shelter is trapping heat that's coming off your body. That's, that's when you think about shelter, in my opinion, that's what you should be thinking about. So, way back before I learned any of that shit, and I, I, I had a tent, and I, this isn't even one of, this is the USGI black bag, but I used to have those, uh, those square bags, like those little flannel fuckers, you know, that are all square, you know, everyone sleeps in them, and, uh, they're fucking heavy. There's no way you're going to carry them around, you know. Uh, in my Yule's pack, we need to be able to pack up in like 10 minutes, hike 4 or 5 miles over mountainous terrain, and then set camp back up, you know. You're not going to do that with with, uh, with a fucking square, you know, square, what, what do I call them, sleeping bags. So, tent and sleeping bag were out. Well, originally I threw the tent out. I kept the sleeping bag. Um, I ditched the, the Walmart sleeping bags. Those are just, they're no good, dude. They're no good. They're not going to stand up to the rigors of, of being packed, used, and unpacked, used, packed, used, and unpacked, used for six months. It's just not going to happen. So, I ditched this tent. This thing is, it really is like eight fucking pounds. And in favor of a tarp. And, uh... So I went down to Walmart and I got these tarps. And tarps have it up on tents in so much that tarps are a lot more versatile. I can make a little tent out of this thing. I can make a lot of different kinds of tents out of this thing. I can make a lean-to out of this thing. I can set it up, you know. Um, well, I guess you could do that with a tent too, never mind. 
but they are more versatile. And uh, the tarp was great and all, but these little polyester tarp things that you're going to buy, they eventually leak. Uh, I hang out with a lot of homeless guys. I'm going to try and get some video of that. Dude, you can learn so much. Just go down and hang out and spend the night with some homeless guys. Bring some goddamn steaks and some beers and be like, hey, dude, let's have a party. You, that's, you don't, yeah. You can learn so much from them. Whole nother tangent. Anyway, these things fucking leak, man. They're, they're, eventually they'll leak. And being weathered in the sun over and over and over again, uh, they're going to crack. They're going to dry out. The plastic's going to, going to fail structurally. And so I had to ditch these. And right about the time I was ditching this tarp for, uh, for my shelter. By the way, I probably should have said this earlier. Your shelter should consist of, of two layers, um, primarily. But essentially, the essence of it is you got an insulative layer and a waterproof breathable layer. You want something that's going to trap your heat in and something that's going to protect you from getting wet and from, from the wet and wind robbing you of your precious heat. Right? But about the time I ditched those things, I started rolling around with uh, with this, the USGI poncho, and um, I mean this thing is awesome, but I didn't, I wasn't sure it could stand up to the rigors of of again day in day out packing, and it it really is bomb proof, and it still has yet to be seen. I mean I've not spent more than a week in the woods with this thing, so you know, I but I've sat on it, I've used it as a ground cloth. But I also worked at CIF over there at Fort Sill, the Central Issue Facility, and we we gave out a lot of unserviceable ponchos that had the, the shit all flaking off of them, the rubberized shit. So I know eventually that's going to happen to this thing when I use it. But uh, the reason I picked it up is because uh, a poncho obviously can be used as a poncho and as a baby bag and as a tarp. So, now you have, you have multi-use items. All, and dude, if you're talking about saving weight, 30 pounds, multi-use comes in great, great benefit. <laughs> They're so handy. But anyway, so now I got these three things. And I rolled around with this for a while, but I ditched it. Because I was like, I was worried about the durability. I ditched it for one of these older German rubberized ponchos. And I like the color better. I, OD green, that's where I'm at. <laughs> but I, I totally ditched it for this thing. And uh, <clears throat> this thing works well. The problem is, the problem I ran into after using this thing as a bivy bag and as a tarp and as a poncho is <sighs> it works well as a tarp and it works well as a poncho. And it didn't work that well as a bivy bag. It did, it's waterproof, but you need more than just waterproof for a bivy bag. You need waterproof, breathable. Like your tent is waterproof, breathable. You know, the, these are not breathable. They're definitely waterproof, not breathable. So when you'd go to bed, what would happen is the heat you generate inside, whatever insulatory layer this is covering, um, uh, the... Condensation happens. I forget the mechanics behind condensation, but but anyway, condensation happens because it's it's warm under the covers and it's cold up above, and so the the condensation always occurs on the warm side of the hot cold differential going on there, and the warm side is where your insulatory layer is. So your shit always got wet when you use this as a bivy bag. So then I thought, oh my goodness. What, what if I buy some cotton, this is just some 100% cotton twill, and it's, it's like 9 by 6 feet or something like that, and I cut a slit in the middle, I could still use it as a poncho, I could still use it as a tarp, and I'd be able to use it as a bivy bag, um, and it's going to be breathable, because it's cotton. Uh, and I know right now you're thinking, cotton, what the fuck are you doing with cotton? Uh, it's waxed, it's waxed cotton. So I painted a whole bunch of wax on, and then went and tossed it in the, uh, tossed it in the dryer over there. And, uh, so there's wax everywhere. When you touch it, you can feel it gets waxy. And I still haven't ruled this idea out. Um, because this thing you can also use for a hammock. 
And uh, I couldn't do that with my other ponchos. I think I got a graphic that... Oh, I, that's right, I don't have any editing software. I would have thrown a graphic up. I'll throw it up at the end. Wait, I can't do that. I don't have any editing software. All right. <laughs> but anyway, so this, this works great. But the problem is the wax will decay. And the only source of wax in the wilderness without giant processing pans is beeswax. And really, how often are you going to stumble across beeswax... I don't know. This is still an idea I'm playing with, but I've, I've kicked it out of the pack for now. But it did work well for all the other things. So then I came back to this, and this I use only as a tarp. Oh, by the way, the wax cotton is fucking heavy. That shit's like five pounds. So that's one of the reasons it got tossed out. Uh, durable, yes. Uh, functional, yes. Fucking heavy, yeah. So, bye-bye. So I came back to this thing, and I use it as just a tarp and just a poncho like it's supposed to be used. And it works well. So we have no problems. Now, when I need to bed down, uh, I got the USGI bivy bag. And this is, this is a three-layer waterproof breathable Gore-Tex. And the three-layer obviously is better. There's two kinds, a two-layer and a three-layer. The three-layer is obviously better because the, the breathable membrane is exposed on the two-layer. Um, see if you can, if I can get this down here. I don't have a two-layer to show you, but on the inside of the three-layer, the, the breathable membrane is white, okay? And there's a, a covering on this, so it's exposed, and I can stab it, and this thing's bomb-proof, and bomb-proof is essential if we're going to live out of our backpack for six fucking months. Essential! But gear cannot fail it. <coughs> so I came back to these two things primarily as my waterproof, breathable layers for my shelter. Um, now we're going to talk about insulative layers. <coughs> when insulating... There are two, two states of your body's existence you need to think about. You need to have your body insulated, insulated while it's moving and while it's stationary. While you're moving is not so hard, you know, because you're generating a whole lot of heat. And anyone who's ever tried to put fucking polypros on before they went on a rucksack march knows that you fucking generate a lot more heat while you're fucking moving than while you're sitting still. And it makes sense. You're moving. You're expending energy. You're moving. Burning that ATP. Burning it. Just burning it. So, there's two paradigms that you gotta think about, and we'll start talking with the one that's moving. When you're moving... I've got these two layers. I honestly don't know if I need two layers. They're two lightweight layers of merino wool. And uh, merino wool works fucking great, dude. It's, it's reasonably durable. You're not going to go walk through sticker bushes with it. But if as a base layer, you need a base layer. It doesn't matter what your base layer is. Uh, you, it could be polypropylene. It could be wool. It could be... I guess it could be cotton if you were horrible at being outdoors um, <laughs> or you didn't get wet or didn't sweat but uh, wool works very well um, god damn it I wish I wish I was more organized in these fucking videos there's so much shit I gotta say and I don't know how to organize in my head in 15 minutes so anyway you need a fucking base layer and uh Here's here's what I used to wear. Wool when you're t when you're talking about living in the woods for a long period of time, insulating while you're wet down to 20 degrees. Wool emerges as the only the only option. It's really your only option because this shit. I've seen. I mean, this is the black USGI bag, but I've seen the green ones get like fucking used up in a year in the field in Korea. We were in the field all the time. There's a dude that fucked his bag all up. Some fucking foam bedding, batting flying out everywhere. <clears throat> so, in the field, uh, durability counts. Especially if you're going to be there for a long time. I totally forgot what the fuck I was saying. But that's why I don't use these anymore. These are durable, but they don't insulate while they're wet. I've tried it. I fucking dunked it and tried sleeping in it. Doesn't insulate while it's wet. And they're not as durable as wool. 
And it's about as heavy. It's about as heavy. Totally forgot what I was talking about. Base layer, wool. Oh yeah, wool emerges as the the premier insulation. So most of my insulatory shit is going to be wool. And I did wrestle with, well, should I make my mobile insulatory shit wool and my stationary insulatory? Or should I just have my... Uh, just have my mobile uh, insulatory shit be wool and my stationary insulatory shit be like that green bag or something. But, dude, really, for six months, moving every day, every day, it's got to be wool. Period. It's got to be wool. So that's why the base layers are wool. I can sweat my ass off in this, and it dries relatively quick when you combine it with the, the, the heat coming off my body. Um... And it just not being covered up by other wool it'll, and being aerated, it dries pretty quick. Wool is not known for drying very quick, but these are relatively thin base layers and they dry very quick. But it doesn't really matter if the wool dries because if it gets wet, it still insulates you. So, base layer, check. Wool socks, check. This is one pair. I like to carry two pair plus the pair I have on me. Uh, you saw the wigwam hat, dude. When you're talking, yeah, when talking about insulating and capturing heat from the body, um, the head is a huge one. The, the whole upper head, your face, your ears, your neck, your veins come really shallow right here because your, your butt, this is a place where your body radiates all the heat it generates, right? And your upper shoulders and your armpits. There's, there's some huge veins going right there, real shallow veins. So if you had to cover, if you had to cover a minimal portion of your body to stay warm, it would definitely be from your titties up, maybe you don't have titties, I got titties, from your titties up and your groin and your feet. If you have all that covered, you're going to be like 80% the way to like as warm as you can possibly be. I mean, you can look around your body. Just look where, where all the veins come close to the skin on your wrists, you know. Um, that's, that's, your, your that's your body's way of alleviating the heat. It doesn't just build the heat up because your body needs to maintain homeostasis. So, wool hat makes that great for your head. Now, I've got 12 million thousand wool blankets. You can ask my fucking wife. I got them everywhere. I got I got USGI wool blankets. I got I got Italian Army wool blankets. I got fucking there's an alpaca wool blanket that I bought from Goodwill. Uh, I mean Lands End wool blankets. I got so many wool blankets. <laughs> but the problem that I had with the the wool blanket is that it wasn't versatile enough for me. Even this one. Even this one right here, and this is a change recently I made, like, geez, two days ago. I put I, I put a little zipper in the middle of this one, and I zip it open, and I can put my head through, and, and it acts like a poncho, which makes it more versatile for show. But the problem was when I had it draped over my body, most of it was down at my sides in the bivy bag. So I'm laying right here. Most of it was crumpled around the sides in my bivy bag. And that's basically wasted weight you're carrying around. I could double it over, but it didn't quite fit over my body when I doubled it over. So maybe if it was a little larger, I would have kept it. I don't know. But anyway, so I went to these smaller ones. And uh, there's also another reason I went to these smaller ones because I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to turn this one into a zipper one like the other one. Zippered head hole like the other one so I can turn it into a poncho. Uh, the virgin wool is lighter. And it insulates more, I've found. Um, the more denser wools, the denser the weave of the wool, are good for insulating against wind. Like, if this, against wind while it's wet. If this virgin bowl gets fucking wet and it's windy, it doesn't insulate very well. But, that's where the fucking poncho comes in. Poncho, if I'm moving, I got a windproof layer. <coughs> Bivy bag, if I'm stationary, I got a windproof breathing bowl layer. Well, and waterproof breathing bowl layer. Um, so I'm going to turn this thing into a poncho, and I also have carry this little thing with me, and by the way, uh, 
I went out, geez, it was like, it was up at Mary's Peak, it was in the mountains, it was like fucking, I don't know, a week or two ago, something like that, with one of my friends, and I tested, I was like, is wool gonna keep me warm <laughs> down to fucking 20 degrees, and there was snow everywhere, I got a picture of it, if only I could edit these goddamn videos, it would be so much better, I'll, I swear I'll figure it out though, we're not gonna do this whole Yule thing, where it's just me uploading this raw footage, I, I totally gotta be able to edit and put pictures in and shit, but anyway, I found out that the fucking wool will keep me warm. The system I use with the base layer, with the hat, with the wool scarf, with the fucking socks will keep me warm. Because that had been a question of mine I was concerned about. Down to 20 degrees. <clears throat> oh, two layers of, of wool will do it. Two layers of wool blankets will keep me warm down to 20 degrees. Um, one layer... Like, if I just got my base layer, my hat on, my bivy bag, and one layer of wool, you ain't going to be warm down to 20 degrees. That, I, if I had to guess, would take you down to 30, 35 degrees. Um, comfortably, anyway. I mean, are you going to die? No. But it is called the Extended Wilderness Living System. So we'd like to live a little and not just be, like, surviving out there. Survival is essentially you slowly wasting away. It's essentially your body living on the fat reserves that it has while you slowly waste away from malnutrition and your body eating itself. We want to live, not survive. So, <clears throat> this, God, it's kind of hard to see down here. One of them is longer than the other one. This one is my body length, and it wraps around me good enough in the bivy bag without the extra bulk hanging down the sides. And this one is shorter, but we're going to get to that in a second. Um... This one is ubiquitous in so much that I can wrap it around my head, like, like so, and uh, it covers my shoulders, and it covers all, that, all those parts we were talking about earlier, like the main parts you're going to want to cover if you're fucking trying to conserve heat. My armpits, my shoulders, my ears, my neck, uh, it doesn't cover my face, but I've got that scarf that I use that I can, uh, actually it's over here, I'll get that in a second. Uh, who, oh, I should have been timing this. I have, who knows what fucking time we're at, anyway. Um, yeah, I better hurry this up. Or I can make it into a two-part segment, who knows. Anyway, so I can use this thing as a poncho, like this, and I can use this thing like this if I'm moving. I've got a wool jacket that's another part of this set, this, uh, this system, the wool system. I can tuck it into my shirt. I can, there's so many things you can do with this thing. I can use it as a coif, I can use it as a bonnet, I can put it over my legs, I can, uh, you can do a lot with just this, this combination of small two wool blankets. And that's why I carry two of these instead of just one. There's more uses for them, and they weigh the same weight as just one of them. So I can double up layers. Uh, quick time check, what are we looking at here? Oh, we got five minutes. We're doing good. I hope I can upload 30-minute videos. Uh, shit. I don't know how long I can fucking upload. I may end up redoing this whole thing. Anyway, <clears throat> a word about wool. I like this jacket. This is a Columbia Gallatin Range jacket. Um, uh, it's been to hell and back, and it's durable and it's great. But it does not insulate while it's wet. And... They claim, and this is something to watch out for when you buy wool. This is really important, dude. Uh, let me find this here. If if you're, where they go? Where you at, baby? Where you at, baby? There it is. Okay. When you're buying wool, look at the type of wool, and I don't even know if this is gonna focus. Maybe if I get all in the picture, the type of wool. And the content of wool. This says it's 65% recycled wool. Recycled wool is not as good as virgin wool or merino wool quality wise. It is wool and it does work. It's just not as good. Um, I find it is more durable though. Recycled wool is definitely more durable than the other kinds. The problem, the main problem with the jacket is this one is 65%. Alright? <laughs> and 65% will keep you warm, but not if you're wet. And what's one of the goals of the goddamn Yule system to keep yourself warm while you're wet? So I had to toss it out. 
I had to go find another one. Which is sad, this one costs like, you know, like 70 bucks or something. Uh, anyway, I'm not doing a review on the jacket. Tossed it out for this one. This is a uh, Filson. Filson Mackinac Cruiser. Oh my god. This thing is the shit. So when I'm laying in my bivy bag, and I have that one long wool blanket, and I have that short wool blanket, what I do is I put the short wool blanket down on my feet, and I put the use this as another wool blanket. So I, everything is essentially covering two layers of wool. And uh, <clears throat> the reason I, I did that, another reason is I want the I want my Yule system to tip be everything I'm ever gonna need uh, in my backpack and what I want to hike in. Like, for example, you're not gonna hike in fucking base layer, like I said earlier. You're just not gonna do it. You're 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 retarded if you do that. <laughs> you're gonna get overheat, you're gonna sweat, you're gonna do a lot of things. So these have to go in my backpack while I'm hiking. Uh this thing is basically, if it's winter time, if I'm if I'm going to camp in the winter time, this is what I'm going to take. This is the only addition. Some people move their shit in and out based on the season they're camping in. I was trying to make a bag that has uh, everything I need for all four seasons, and I couldn't do it obviously because <laughs> it's kind of hard. But uh, this is so this this Filson Mackinac Cruiser is the one thing that I will take. If it's winter time, grab my bag in the cruiser. If it's fall, spring, or summer time, grab my bag. So, that's as simple as I could make it. It's pretty sweet. So, God, I got a lot more to say on shelter, and you know, I don't know. We haven't even gotten to sleeping pads and shit. I seriously have too much to say. Um, I guess I'm making another shelter video. I guess we'll call this part one. <laughs> 30 minutes of part one. Uh, boom.